But there is, in fact, one problem. In fact, it's not the complete version of Maxwell's equations. There it turns out that there is one of these is incomplete. And it turns out that Ampere's law, as it's written here, isn't quite right. And again, it was Maxwell who was the first one to realize this. And the way you can argue it is this. Um, let's say you have a wire, okay? And there's a current in it. And Max, or excuse me, Ampere's law says that if you imagine a loop surrounding that wire, so this wire is going through this loop, so I'm kind of drawing it in perspective here, then the enclosed current is going to be thought of as the, if I imagine a surface that was stretched over that ring or that uh, loop surrounding that wire, the enclosed current is the amount of current piercing through that surface. Okay, so there's a current piercing through that surface, which tells us that if there is an enclosed current, we're going to get a curly pattern of magnetic field around the loop here. Okay, we've seen this before. The ambiguity is that it turns out that's not the only surface you can think of as being bound by that loop. And it, you have to use a little bit of imagination here, but... I, I don't necessarily have to have the, the surface stretched over the, uh, the loop. I could have a surface that's bound by the loop. It could be in any shape. For example, it could be sort of a bowl shape. So here's a surface that kind of stretches out. And you can imagine the ring here as the mouth of a bowl, okay, or some like a vase-looking shape. Or if you're blowing a bubble, remember we made the analogy of a soap film and a bubble. If you're blowing a bubble before the bubble actually leaves the, uh, the little ring, it kind of blows outward. And so there's the edge of it is, is bound by the, uh, by the ring here, but the surface is kind of stretched outward. But that's okay because the, eventually the current does pierce through the surface. It's just not where the ring is, but it does pierce through the surface. But there's a problem if you have a situation like this. Let's say we have a current and a capacitor, so a parallel plate capacitor. Well, I draw my loop around this current, and again, if I think about that surface, there's going to be current piercing through this surface, so I definitely have an eye enclosed, and I'm definitely going to get a magnetic field going around that loop. But if I imagine the bowl shape now, and I'm going to stretch this bowl-like surface around one half of the capacitor. And again, that's a comp completely legitimate surface to think of, bound by that loop. Is there any current piercing through the bowl? No. Is there any charge that flows, at when it flows across the capacitor? No. No. So we've got a problem because now it says that I enclosed is equal to zero, right? But we still got this magnetic field. I mean, we, just because we've changed the shape of the bowl doesn't mean the magnetic field goes away. So... We've got a problem. Something's wrong with Ampere's law. And Maxwell realized that you have to make sort of an analogy to Faraday's law. In Faraday's law, it's, it says that if you have a magnetic field that's changing, you get a curly electric field. And so what if the opposite tr were true? What if you have a changing electric field and you get a magnetic field. Well, let's look at the capacitor here. What's happening if a current is running onto the capacitor? The charge is building up on the plate, right? So we have positive charge here, negative charge here, and this Q is increasing. What's going on inside the capacitor?
Well, in fact, it's a Coulomb field, right? Because there's just charge on the plate. So we have inside the capacitor an electric field, right? And the electric field is pointing to the right. Okay, so I have an E inside that's pointing to the right. What's happening to the electric field? It's getting bigger. The electric field is getting bigger because we're charging up the capacitor. More and more charge means more and more a larger and larger electric field. So here's a case where along this you know, deformed bowl-like surface, we have a, an electric field that is increasing. And so Maxwell realized that we can get a curly pattern of magnetic field, and this is B, if we have a changing electric field, just as we got a curly pattern of electric field if we have a changing magnetic field. And so Maxwell realized that Ampere's law has to be corrected, and we have to add a term onto it. And the term we have to add, and I've got to make sure I get the constants correct here, the term is... Mu naught, epsilon naught, so the ma this magnetic constant and this electric constant, times a time derivative of an electric flux through that surface. So E dot N hat dA. Okay, so let's, let's just say this one more time. This is an electric flux, electric field measured over a surface, which is what we've got inside this capacitor. We have a derivative with respect to time, so if the electric field is changing with time, we're going to get a curly pattern of magnetic field. Okay, so there's sort of two ways to produce a magnetic field. We can either have a current or you can have an electric field that's changing. Okay, so this is the complete form of Maxwell's equations. Gauss's, the two, Gauss's law, Gauss's law for magnetism, this, what sometimes this is called now the Ampere Maxwell law because Maxwell added the correction, and Faraday's law. Those four, those four plus the force laws, essentially, again, sum up everything we need to know about electric, electric magnetic fields. So we have this symmetry here. We have electric field changes, we get a magnetic field, or we have magnetic field changes and we get an electric field. And this is also kind of suggestive. It, it says that, well, every pattern, every pattern of electric and magnetic fields in the universe has to obey these four equations. If it doesn't obey these four equations, it's not possible. Okay? We, we, it's an impossible pattern of electric magnetic field. So maybe there's a possibility to have an electric field that's changing, which creates a magnetic field that's changing, which creates an electric field that's changing, which creates a magnetic field that's changing, and have sort of a self-perpetuating, changing electric and magnetic field pattern. Okay? Seems suggestive, again, from this symmetry between Ampere, uh, the Ampere-Maxwell law and Faraday's law. Well, if we imagine such a... The, we're going to play a little game today, which is basically if we can imagine such a pattern and then try and apply that pa applying that pattern to each of these four equations and seeing if it satisfies each of those four equations, then we know it's possible. That's, that's the name of the game, okay? 